That's the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We're about to look at the first major conversation, the consensus of River State APC and the choice of a Cuba candidate. Now, ahead of the 2023 general elections, the leadership of the All Progressive Congress uh, has picked Lagos-based businessman Tony Cole as a standard bearer in River State. While 10 governorship aspirants from the River Rhine extraction including Tonya Princewill and Mr. Dakoko Peterside, had signed a pact to support whoever emerged amongst them. Uh, there seemed to be a lot of disagreement with the emergence of Tonya Cole as the Cuba candidate for the APC. Also, Magnus Abbey, who is an aspirant, had declared his, an int his interest to contest the governorship position on the platform of the APC also kicked against the candidacy of Tony Cole, as he described it as a process of fraud, adding that the business mogul will not be accepted by the APC delegate. We do have joining us this morning to make sense of all that's happening in River State as regards the APC, Okunabon Katari. Good morning, Okunabon Katari. It's good to have you join us this morning. Good morning, Mercy. We are meeting again. <laughs> yes, good to have you join us. Uh, so, what what do you really uh, mean? Justin, good, Justin, good morning, Justin. Uh -huh, we're not calling now, Justin. <laughs> good morning, Nobunabo. Thanks for joining us on the show. Thank you. Yeah, it is a pleasure. So, um, let's get to the conversation. Can you quickly tell us what's happening with the um, River State APC as regards their choice of uh, governorship candidates? Well, first, whatever I have to tell you uh, is based on my perception and uh, uh, the preponderance of opinion as a member of the public. Like I tell people, I'm not a member of APC, I'm not a member of PDP, and so my views are disinterested. Uh, oh my God, you see, whenever I'm on, on air, don't worry, we'll switch on the deck. But you can hear me, can you? Go ahead. Well, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, very good. Very good. So I'm not a member of APC or PDP. So when I give my views on this issue, they are disinterested. Uh, but I have it on very good authority, and I know, and it's most secret, like you rightly said, um, the hopeful, Cuba hopeful, because I think uh, you become an aspirant when you buy the pub. I might be wrong. But the Cuba hopefuls, uh, find the fact that they are going to support whoever is eventually emerges as the candidate of the party. And that fact was signed some weeks back. And uh, what I gather right now is that they, they, what they meant was that at the end of the primary, whoever emerges will be supported by every other person uh, and not before the primary. Now, the standard bearer of the party River State for the Gouverneur election is Toyo Ko. And uh, the choice, the, 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 the process is being impugned, is being questioned by uh, his other colleagues who even signed that pact. Because they are saying no, that what they meant was after the primaries and not before the primary. So they are impugning the way Toyo Ko emerged. They believe that it was architecture for him to emerge. And, um, well, I agree. Some persons like uh, Honorable Chief Michael West, uh, Toya Prince Will, and Co. have uh, accepted Toya Cole as a standard bearer. But then, few other persons are dissenting because they, they believe that uh, the process wasn't credible enough that it was orchestrated. And that is that dissension is the problem that the party is going to have right now. I'm talking of the camp of right on the civil community by nature. Now you also have the issue of the Magnus Abbey camp. Of course we all know that the APC and River State is split into two camps. You have Magnus Abbey, you have right on the civil community by nature. Now the Magnus Abbey camp is an uh, always insisted that Magnus Abbey will contest. And Magnus Abbey himself has said, should he fail 
at the primary is going to accept anybody. But no candidates shall be foisted on the party and on the state. So that is the partner right now. Now, it is a little bit worrisome that um, just there are about 10 people. You have Honorable Sokonte Davis, you have Dawari George, you have Dakuku Peter side, you have Michael Wells, you have Fire Prince Will. Uh, about, about 10 of them are there about who signed that pact. And they all belong to the right of the two committees uh, camp. Now, that is a camp. Let me state here now that that is a camp that is being recognized by the federal government, by the national rather. Because the, the um, Ebeka Beke, who is the chairman of the APC in Labor State, belongs to that camp. I'm not the man of the public. So that is one camp that, as far as the APC national is concerned, that is the APC in Labor State. Now, the fact is, these other persons who also signed that pact, of the how many, about 10 of them, only to content babies, uh, Tony Prince Will and Michael West have come up to say they accept uh, architectural code as their standard bearer. The rest are silent. And to me, that is ominous because it dredges up the solid experience of 2019, you know, where uh, the internal ranking stripped the APC of. Uh, Partaking, they have the point of partaking in the 2019 elections. And so the, I am a little bit worried that if uh, that if uh, out of about 10, only three persons have come out openly to say they agree, then just uh, tell you cool. what of the other? Some might even come up to say, yes, we endorse tell you cool in the open, while there might be fifth column. I'm not saying these other ones are central. I'm not saying they are fit columnists. I'm saying I'm we are just giving an analysis of the situation. As 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 politicians, these things happen. You have the mold, you have the fit columnists. If the process they believe, if they decide a sinister plot, they believe that the process is not transparent enough. What makes you think that they might not become fit columnists? We all are, we all know that for example, Magnus Abbey was a member of the eighties when he took the APC to court. With the sole intention, although the special reason was that uh, the immediate uh, credibility and transparency, but the sole intention was if I'm not going to get it, then I'm also I will also ensure that uh, whoever is in my brings will not get it. So, uh, uh, so uh, Katara, you're saying so that it's a personal thing and not in the interest of the party. So how are we sure that these other ones are also not going to play the role that Magnus has played in 2019? All right, um, no, so, 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 but, Kataria, let's come back a bit because we're I looking don't know, at. I, don't, I, cannot, I cannot speak. One minute. I cannot tell you, I cannot ascertain the apocryphalness or veracity of that. Who has come up to say, we need needy, needy, he is going to contest? He was also one of the signatures. He also signed that part. So, so I am of scared that if these issues are not resolved in the past. What happened in 2019, we might have a rehash of what happened in 2019. Okay. So the elder, Open up Bank let's, let's come to this. Open up Bank Kataria, let's, let's stay with the issue of the... Tactfully and quickly. Let's, let's come back to this. I mean, we're, we're trying to understand what's really happening with the River State APC as regards, you know, the issue of consensus and the candidate that has emerged. Now, if you look at the um, Electoral Act, of course, uh, you know, the 2022 uh, bill that's been put in place, it talks about consensus candidate. It says the political party that adopts a consensus candidate shall secure the written consent of all cleared aspirant for the position indicating their voluntary withdrawal from the race and the endorsement of a consensus candidate. It also for the states that um, uh, in that paragraph B, that where a political party is unable to secure a written consent of all cleared aspirant for the purpose of a consensus candidate, it shall revert to the choice of direct or indirect primaries for the nomination of candidates for the afford mentioned or you know aforesaid elective position just in a sentence 
do you think that you know the candidacy of Tony Ko uh, meets uh, the requirement of the law? Well, uh, if if it's up, if it's up, speaking, yes, 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 speaking legally, the truth about it is that, uh, just like you rightly said, as you rightly quoted, you know, no doubt you're going to have uh, primaries, whether it's going to be direct or indirect. If it is consensus, because they must all appear at that venue and openly declare their support for the consensus candidate. Anything short of that is illegal and will nullify the primary. So you're not definitely going to have primary. For example, Magnus Abbey has insisted and he started campaigning that uh, for his governorship ambition. So definitely you're going to have primary. Even if Terry Princeton is a consensus candidate for um, the faction, the right of the people of the faction. I don't even want to call it a faction because uh, it, is, it has been recognized by the federal government. So even if Terry Cole is being recognized or uh, is being accepted by the consensus candidate, and Magnus Abbey dissent, you're definitely going to have the primary. That is what. Now, even if Manu Abi eventually agrees, even if he has questions, it's okay, yes, thank you, you're still going to have the primary. It is at the venue of the primary that they will now make public, make known, openly declare their support for the consensus candidate. So, if you have a primary, that's when you're going to have primary. Now, if, for example, the likes of Ojukaye too, who is also the sentence, a lot of people are, a lot of them are upset with the uh, the way uh, call it met. So even a Jukaye, unless it's been placated before the primary, the day the, prim the day of the primary, Ojukaye will even come out to contest. And so you're not going right now to speak, you can't even talk of a consensus candidate. Because uh, you see how dissenting voices. So you can't even talk of a consensus candidate. Definitely the APC and River State will have primaries for Google Actual Candidate. Right. That is not in that. That's very fabulous. Now, I haven't said this. Now you look at the circumstances, you know. Um I, I am like I said, I am a little bit worried because I don't want the reaction of what happened in twenty in, in twenty nineteen. I don't want the reaction of that. And that's why I said I mean because if that happens, it is stand the risk of not being on the ballot again in twenty twenty three. Now, people think it's a party affair. It goes beyond the party affair because the one party system. And that one party system, of course, you know, it becomes draconian. And that's why I enjoy all the feeding parties to shoot their swords, strike a compromise, and ensure that at least rivers people will have choices to make. Because you have a PDP. It is not even peculiar to the APC alone. As I speak right now, we have in Canada Rangers in the PDP. What is happening in the APC? In fact, in the PPP, it might be more accentuated. Because recently, the government of the state, yes, of which it interdicted, warned them sternly, especially the commissioners and special advisors, that should any of them be involved in who succeeds him, that such a person will be thrown out. It, it, it's, it's everywhere, it's, it's in the social media. All he right. warned them. All right, so, people and definitely, call. people have got forms. So the same thing, it's a normal thing, especially when you are pushing the crunch time. Now, it takes the wisdom of the leadership to tactfully address this issue. Otherwise, it's not as if it's peculiar to APC. APC is because right now you already have a candidate, and that's why you think that, oh, you're just APC. You also have the same problem green in PDP and in every other, and in most prominent and popular political parties. All right, uh, let's talk about all of these issues that you have mentioned. Uh, rightly said that from the foregoing, there, is, there seems to be the issue of um, imposition of uh, you know, interest and candidate uh, at the APC level uh, in River State. And also you talked about um, the issue of uh, two different factions in two different camps. Uh, you talked about um, the Roti Mamechi camp and, of course, uh, Senator Magnus um, camp. With all of this internal wrangling, wrangling with all of this um, politicking and, of course, uh, uh, the people not really having their say or the right to discuss who they actually want to govern them, don't you think it would actually bring about uh, maybe the demise of the party, as it were, in River State? You know, you know, you know I expressed the fear, not demise. I, I, that, when you talk of the mind, you're going to the extreme. You know, I express the fear of it not being on the ballot. Well, that could be a precursor for the mind, uh, probably. But I haven't said that. Like, you know, I also said uh, the, the national recognized the 
the, the, I don't want to call it a faction. Should I say you have APC and dissidents? And put it that way. Because uh, the, the national recognizes uh, Emeka Bete as the chairman of APC and River. You know, so let's say APC and dissidents, you know. But having, having said that, the fact is, I'm not even going to talk of imposition. When you say imposition, you know, it's like this must be the candidate. When the selection issue was taking place, the minister wasn't there. Now you have the APC leaders who were there. And it was, it was put to vote. Of all those candidates, who do you think will be acceptable to Rivers people? Who do you think Rivers people will want? And majority, out of how many, Toyoko got 10 votes. Next to him was Dawari George, who got three votes. I mean, the gap is so much. And so many issues we are taking on that by First, given the overheated uh, uh, policy, given the, the, the wranglings in the party, who do you think we are going to choose that will be acceptable to all? Tony Cole is not a politician. Tony Cole is a businessman, like you rightly described. And so the thinking was that this man probably has not offended anybody. And so the chances of him being accepted by all are quite high. That is number one. And number two, this man will strongly believe, yes, um, in 2019 he contested, even though APC was not on the ballot, we strongly believe in somebody that whose loyalty is not it can never be in doubt. In other words, his loyalty is to reverse people. Having not been a politician, definitely he will be very objective in whatever he does. So let's take Sir uh, Cole. If we take any other candidate, I'm not saying this other candidate, I'm not impugning or impeaching the credibility of the other candidates, please. But if we take this candidate, there won't be anything like caucus, no caucus, loyalty, clique, and so forth. He will be a governor for all. Both party members and non-party members. Number three, if you take Tony Cole, given his um, strikes in the business industry, he's going to attract a lot of investment to the state. It's not a question of being cocoon, you know, like um, you have the, 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 the you have uh, how, how do you call it? Click, trying to direct him and guide him on what to do. No, he will come as somebody that is disinterested. Somebody that is open, somebody that is impartial. So these are of some of the considerations for the choice of Tony Cole as the candidate. Because these other politicians take it or leave it, they have clicked. Every politician will definitely have his clique, will definitely have his, his group, will definitely have the and if that happens, some people express the fear that they might be left out. Politics is all about interest. So why not to take somebody that will be neutral, somebody that will be like a unifying force. I'm not justifying it. I'm saying the reasons that they advance, please. Someone that will be like a unifying force. Because for every politician, for example, I'll give you my very simple example. A is contesting, B is contesting, C is contesting, A, B are politicians. Now, whether I like it or not, A, B has his group. A, A has his group, B has his group. C is not a politician. C might be neutral. Somebody that will accommodate both somebody from A, B, and any other person. These are some of the considerations that we are taking on that, the issues that we are taking on that advisement for the choice of fair code, because I interrogated the post. Now, the problem is, most of them believe, like I said, that the whole thing was architecture, orchestrated before that process. And that is where the problem is. It's as if, oh, the minister himself had talked to certain persons to say, this is my choice. And I want him to remain. And those persons are just being beaten. Okay, I'm open about open these, about these, are just, these are just conjectures. These are conjectures. But open about the, tire. the minister we want to talk to, how many of them, the panel, panel of uh, judges, so to speak, how many of them? Open are about the tire. We're almost out of time. Well, of let's just quickly see. If it will not lead. So, one minute, sorry. It will not lead to the other aspirants. Uh, it, it, it's a little bit it's questionable. Because if I tell you something in politics, one way or the other, it will leak. So it will um, leak until after the event. Open up the time. We're, we're almost so out that, of time. That, that's why a lot of them are dissenting. Yeah.
So we're almost out of time. This might just be the last. Then there. Whatever it is, so well, I don't know if we can actually just get the word in address. So we can actually conclude on this. Yeah. Open up, Uncle Tara. Let's ahead, get straight to this sorry. one before we call it a wrap. We're out of time, and we just have like one question to go now. But let's just look at it in this slide. So um, just like you have mentioned, we remember that Tony Cole was uh, the party's candidate in 2019. And, you know, at the time you had the APC being excluded from the ballot box uh, following the litigation that was put up against, um, you know, him at the time. And so you had the likes of Senator Magnus Abe, like you have mentioned, and you also had the minister, of course, uh, Rotimia Mechi, who was also part of the litigation. Not also forgetting to mention that in 2019, Tonya Cole also mentioned the fact that you had the minister lure him, you know, to be part of the race. And now the reporter also saying that uh, the minister has a hand in him emerging as a consensus candidate. What could be the interest now if he led a litigation against him in 2019? Please, sorry, I, I didn't hear you agree. So I, I'll probably just do a recap of all of that. So I'm saying that if you follow the course of event from 2019, when Toya Code was a candidate, and of course, um, the APC was not represented at the ballot. Uh, they were excluded following the litigations that you had at the time. And so you had people who led the litig these litigations. Uh, you're having the likes of uh, Senator Magnus Abe, and of course, the minister, Rotimir Mechi, who was also part of it. And you also have the fact that Tonya Code himself also mentioned that in 2019 he got into the race because you had the minister luring him in his words, you know, to be part of the race. Now in 2022, you also have some quotas who are dissatisfied with what's going on, saying that the minister has a hand in him becoming, uh, you know, the consensus candidate. So the question here is, what is really the interest now? And if you were part of a team that, you know, had that court litigation against them, so. What what changed in 2022? I just, you know, like I like I rightly said, you know, I said, I said the dissension is occasioned by the belief that the whole process was orchestrated. You know, I said that, and that's why a lot of them, like Ujukai Flagamak, believe that no, it wasn't a credible process. Talking about the choice of Kenya, you know, but no doubt about that. I mean, it's, it's human frailty to so think. I mean, it's natural for something. Because this is the same person you brought out in 2019. And all, all, all of a sudden, we all agree that the consensus candidate will emerge after the primaries. Whoever emerges, we are going to agree. So how come it's preceding the primary? So these are all the fears and these are all the worries. And this, this, this is a point for the dissension. But having said this, my advice, advice as in S, not the C, advice as in S, you know, my advice is this. In 2019, you lost out. Now, if you continue on that trajectory, definitely you're going to lose out in 2023. Who's interest is it? Is it an interest of the party? You're going to lose out. The party is also going to lose out. Whatever it is, that's why I say it is incumbent now on the leadership of the party, especially the minister, to invite all the agreed parties to a round table and resolve these issues. Because what I see is what happened in 2019 might have happened again in 2023. Now, if you want to step that up, then you must have, you must judge your confabulation. You must sit down to discuss. All Please, right, so whatever well. it is, let us settle this issue. All right, thank Otherwise, you. Thank the you. party also stands the risk of not being on the ballot in 2023. All but right, now, so much this other you. issue of the position is a matter of context. Thank you so much, Obunabo. All right, we've been looking at um, the APC in River State and the choice of candidacy and, of course, uh, all that is going on now. We had to go back to what happened in 2019 and try to, you know, find a way forward as we get into the polls in 2023. Thank you so much uh, once again, Obunabo and Kotaria. Thank you. All right, it's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll take a very uh, short break. We'll come back and talk about um, the impact of um, malaria in Nigeria, the workforce, the country's economy, and the talk of vaccines. How far have we done? In a moment, to join us again.